headlines with in-depth conversations with the newsmakers themselves today on the program. The world's first anti-dengue vaccine now hounded with controversy. With the government demanding a full refund. A strong possibility that uh, they might have uh, not uh, disclosed an information with regard to findings of severe dengue um, reaction. While lawmakers launch a probe to find the truth. Well, because there are in information that uh, we have received that um, it was done, I don't know, that it might have been done in, in haste. A former health official speaks up, saying the vaccination program could endanger rather than save children's lives. Former Health Undersecretary Ted Herbosa joins us live. And later, the first ever 3D printed brains for a damaged sea turtle's shell. That's for today's In Focus. Thank you for joining us. I'm Pinky Webb. The health department has created a task force that will look into the controversial mass dengue vaccine program. The department also demands a refund from its manufacturer, Sanofi Pasture. It also wants Sanofi to cover the hospitalization of those who will contract severe dengue from the vaccine. Now lawmakers investigate the dengue vaccine issue to find out if there was any irregularity in the procurement of the multi-billion peso worth of vaccines. Let's go straight to the source of the story. We have former health undersecretary Ted Herbosa. Doctor, good to see you again. How have you been? Good to see you too, uh, Pinky. How have you been? Okay, I've now been uh, back to the University of the Philippines and they even promoted me. I'm now the executive vice president of the whole University of the Philippines. Oh, system. okay. So back to UP, but of course you were with the Department of Health. Was it from 2010 till 2014, the same time as Secretary Ona? Correct. Are exactly you? the same time. Correct. Uh, well, I, uh, he, he asked me to help him in November of 2010 and UP gladly lent me to the Department of Health and then when he resigned in December 20 of 2014 I also filed my uh, courtesy resignation. You're co-terminus co with him co pretty much. Co-terminus with the President of the Philippines. Ah. So at that time the President had to accept it. So it was accepted by President Aquino in March of 2015. But you were, were you recommended by Secretary Ona? Yes. Okay, yes. so and then when he left you decided to leave as well, basically? Correct. Okay, correct. so Secretary Ona was a uh, Department of Health chief for four and a half years, so 2010 to 2014 and so with you. I guess if he was four and a half, you're probably four, four years. Four and a half, correct. So let's talk about the controversy. Uh, Dr. Herbosa, since 2016 or maybe even earlier than that, you were already raising concern about this dengue vaccine vaccine why why as early as that correct we doctors know a lot about drug development vaccine development it takes years uh, to actually develop it so for something to get out of phase 3 trial which is just the clinical trials for safety there is a next phase which is really market surveillance that means you register the new drug bring it to market but make sure it is physician supervised not as a mass-based program. So, when so is it like a test? You, you test it in the market first? Technically, some people like to call market surveillance as phase four. But uh, vaccines don't like to call that because they say it's already proven. But this is exactly the same example as any other drug that had been pulled out again. Wait, so I'm a market. little confused. So if it's st uh, stage three already, is that good? Is that already a good phase vaccine? Phase three is trial with humans. So they did that in many parts of the world. The Philippines was one of those that uh, got the funding from Sanofi to do the human trials. Okay. So these are called clinical trials. So this was done in uh, Laguna, in Cavite, and in uh, the national capital. What year? Uh, from uh, during the time of uh, Secretary Ona, okay. correct. Still, so yeah. during the time of Secretary. It was experimental. Oh, oh. Uh, meron na niyan, yes. nest case na siya to students. Uh, yeah, is that correct? To, to students. To How students. many of them? I don't know the exact amount, but these were, uh, I think, a few thousand as well, uh, because it's, it's a controlled study. That means when it's controlled, uh, it passes through ethics review boards, and then they, they make sure that any, any problem 
will be uh, handled also by the researchers as well. So let me get straight to the point. If it was experimental and done, administered during the time of Secretary Ona, I know that it wasn't purchased, right? Mm, not purchased. Because parang experimental. It was funded by Sanofi. It's funded by Sanofi, but would you and Secretary Ona have some sort of culpability here too because of the recent um, development on, on the Vaksha, sir? No, because we didn't purchase it. We didn't even fund it. Because we knew, we were both doctors, Secretary Ona and I are both clinicians, and we know for a fact that after you finish phase three, you still have a long process. And mind you, even if you register a drug uh, for, uh, by, the, by the FDA, the Philippine FDA, it will take another few years before experts will say, yes, the government uh -huh. can buy that drug. In That's fact, the formulary can... executive committee. In fact, they can even recall that drug, right? Correct. And yeah. if, if during the market uh, surveillance, there's yeah. any side effect that's seen, the, the drug is pulled out and, and the registration is canceled, which is exactly what Secretary Duque did. Mm -mm. Now, which is correct. Yeah, because, which is the way to do it. But, but because, of course, of the statements made by Sanofi as well. Correct, because they are now corroborate region. what we had been saying all along yeah. in January 2016. We said, if you are have never had dengue and you are injected this, you will get more serious dengue. And this was seen in the study. That's, that's what I wanted to ask you. How come you knew that and you were speaking about it that basically what it is is if you are administered the drug and you had no prior infection, you're a candi candidate for severe dengue. Is, uh, um, did I describe That's the complex correct? thing about this. Unlike, let's say, measles. You get measles, I develop uh, a vaccine, I weaken the measles virus, I inject it to you and you produce antibody. Yeah, you get the problem with this, with this disease is exactly that. It has four serotypes, and when you get the second infection, that's when you get the very severe disease. Uh -huh. So that's why for many years, none of the scientists could develop a good vaccine yeah, because, because of that problem. This virus is intelligent. <laughs> because there's no vaccine for, for dengue. None yet. None yeah. yet. There are three in the experimental stages, one right. from Japan and one from the U.S., and yeah. this one well, uh, by Sanofi. Yeah, this was the first. In fact, I think, what, was it you that said, possibly Mina Delito, because there are other two countries doing an experimental stage on uh, the anti-dengue vaccine? Was that you? Correct, correct. <laughs> and then it was Mexico that registered this as phase four and Brazil, and we were the third country. El Salvador. But, El Salvador as well. Yeah. Uh, but this... The, the, the haste is really in implementing it as a program. Okay, I'm going to go to that, but uh, this is a co cause for concern for me. Why would, and it could be um, something done on a, um, not on a regular, done normally, but why would you and Secretary Ona agree to do an experiment on kids, knowing, sir, Knowing that you already said that you, you, raised, you, you, rose, you already told us that you were telling the public that there's this warning against this, uh, this particular vaccine. Okay, all, all drugs go through a research phase. So this is approved by ethics review boards. The ethics review boards study a protocol, a research design to make sure there is no harm to humans when it goes to. So that's a different process. The politician has no say in that. The Secretary of Health has no say in that. The Under Secretary of Health has no say in that. They go through a process of experts that review the but, but ethical why, nature of a but why clinical the studies. But, but why the Philippines? Why experiment it on, on children in oh, the Philippines? Because, because we have dengue also yeah, as but a, so are other an endemic problem. And other countries did it as well. Okay. So this is a multi-country trial. Okay, so he, here's the next question, um, doctor. Yung inadminister nung vaccine during your time, I'm still sticking to that secretary mm -hmm. on a uh, USEC Herbosa type, are these also candidates for this possible severe dengue? Um, with, yes. Uh, so, yes, they are. Uh, so are you liable as well? No. No, because that, that's an uh, informed consent. That's the difference. That w when you're asked that we will try a clinical trial, there is an informed consent. So we follow certain steps. Many of the children now implemented in the school-based program in April 4 of 2016 didn't even know the consequences of the, the disease. Parang may waiver ka yes, uh, during your time. Consent. Yeah, it's called yeah. an informed consent if you I join a clinical trial. And if you don't like, you, you don't, don't have, have to. to. So and then if you join, there is compensation oh. for it. They are uh, actually given money for being joining the trial. Because well. it's a... 
because you're it's asking an experiment, her, correct, correct, basically, correct. right? So, so those are rules of experiment. So, so there's no liability for secretary on it there because those are done under the rules of clinical, now I understand. clinical research. Now I understand that. So and then henceforward, sir, um, Secretary Gerbin with this um, Deng Baksha vaccine. So many questions, sir. Number one, who allowed it? Who signs off? Is there a bids and awards committee? Are you a member of the bids and awards? Can you help us understand um, what goes on in the Department of Health or how this happened? Okay, the Department of Health has several bids and awards committee. One of the bids and awards committee is a uh, awards committee that actually procures vaccines. We procure about nine vaccines annually. And the annual budget for that is about 2.7 billion annually to immunize 2 nine. million kids for the whole country. Now here you are uh, uh, telling government saying we need 3.5 billion and I'm going to vaccinate only three regions uh, and target school age kids. So that's more than the program we actually spend for our whole immunization program for, for measles, TB, uh, hepatitis, uh, uh, all, all those other diseases. So it, on the cost benefit side, it's really a problem already. Now you ask me, how is this done? It's not in the budget of 2015. It's not in the budget of 2016. If we had an earth-shaking vaccine that came out that will save lives, I'm going to go to Senate and ask for a supplemental budget. budget. I go, it's not budgeted, but a new discovery came out, and I think the Filipinos will benefit. The process, the correct process, is ask for a supplemental budget, and the one that gives that budget is Congress and Senate. So that's usually done. That's usually asked for. But this one didn't go through that. So again, in that process, when you say this was thought up and panahon uh, paniona, that's not true. That's a lie. Yeah. Uh, Garin is caught lying because she, she met in uh, May with Sanofi officials in Paris. In the pictures are there. The ambassador's report is there. Mm -hmm. And after that, she started to request for funding. Now, now I'm just going to say this, Dr. Herbosa. She said that um, there was no malice. She forgot. She said it was two years ago. Nakalimutan daw niya. Do you believe that? I don't. I think that's another lie. I think that's another lie that there's no malice because right after the May, uh, in, uh, 20, in December 22, the drug was registered by but, FDA, and she was the acting FDA director. I, I, I wanted to go <laughs> to that too, but here uh, the question is, she says that there was no malice. In fact, if there was malice, why would I be with members of the Department of Foreign Affairs? Let, let me is tell that you, a good point, When sir? I became undersecretary, the first thing the people in the Department of Health told me was, sir, you cannot meet with suppliers and uh, contractors of government. Because that's another procurement problem. There's impropriety. There's impropriety in that. Because if you see me whining and dining with a supplier that makes hospital equipment, or that's not appropriate. And then you hear they have a deal with the Department of Health. I've been told that. So I suppose she's been told that. And I think that's civil service rules. That, that's why you have a procurement, a back that does the tender. The bids and awards the committee. The bids and awards committee is a... Uh, party that will make the decision and yeah. not the head of the agency. So who made the decision? Was it the back or was it Secretary Garin? I think it was Secretary Garin. Well, you you think you're not says, sure? No, I, uh, I'm sure because she, because she announced this in her, <laughs> in her TV interviews. You can go back to all the media interviews in January and she announced it and she said she's allotting money for it. What now uh, amazes me is she again lied about where the money came from. The money came from savings. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, so again, that's another something that's totally. I think I, I, I think I can call it illegal because for government funds to be spent, 3.5 billion pesos, you need to go to Congress and Senate. Where was the money taken from? Where what, was it sourced from? It, see, here, the funny thing she says it was initially she says it was from syntax, and then she she changes again. The same way with this uh, dinner and whining and dining. She says now it's coming from the uh, unused retirement funds of government employees. So again, again to me when I hear that, oops, my ears will get hot because you cannot use personal expenses to buy uh, products and supplies. That's technical malversation. Who will give us the truth behind where the funds were sourced from? Dr. Uh, the Department of Budget it's and Management. It's still the DBM. Because the Department of Budget Management can, uh, has a paper trail in this one. Right. Because they issue what is called a sub-allotment release order. Mm -hmm. And anytime, if we want to buy something, the first thing we need to get is that sub-allotment so, release order. Do you know where the money was sourced from, sir? 
Personally, no. But from news, it says it's from savings of something. But it was not in, appropriated by Congress and Senate. Not, which is not in 2015 and, and not, not even 20, in 2016. 2016. We'll be taking a short break. This is the source on CNN Philippines coming up. Should the health department stop the Denga vaccination program for good? Former DOH Undersecretary Ted Herbosa will still be with us after the break and later find out how 3D technology can save the lives of sea turtles. That's for today's In Focus. Sanofi admitted that. Whether WHO recommended it or not, WHO said we no. didn't recommend that. Yeah. So she's lying on two counts. Okay, hold already. on, Sarah. Yes? Yes. I said it. Yeah. Mm -mm. No, no, no. Uh, Tris, the consent is during the experimental stage, not during the mass, product, um, mass vaccination. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay, so we were just, um, our, um, our producers were asking kasi yung iba daw kasi wala daw consent. So tama naman ako, I explained I that. that. Oh, I heard yeah. that. Uh, many, so they put up a website now for all these mothers who are nag -aalala. And they said they never got this informed consent. Pero yung consent sabi mo during the experimental stage lang. Oh, they, they also ask for consent because this is not, the government cannot push you to ah, have your children ah, wait, vaccinated. So, you're so when DepEd started it, they also asked for a consent. Ah, kailangan may ganun din. Oh, but the problem was the consent was problematic. It was like a consent for the field trip. Do you want your son to join the field trip or not? Ah, so, ibig sabihin, ah, uh, ibig sabihin... May mga problema din sa implementation. De, sir, para so, let's concentrate on the procurement because I think... Yes, sir, sorry. Now. It's oh. important for the moms kasi okay, oh, who tama, are tama watching yan. us. No, May consent yan. din pala kahit hindi... Nang hingi ng consent ang debt. Tama ba? Uh -oh. But the experts have a copy of the consent. Sige, pag-usapan natin. It's not a real informed consent. Okay. Pero pag-usapan pa rin natin yung back kasi... Yeah, yeah. Yun yun. Yeah. Sir, sorry, so we're, we're live on Facebook now. Okay. So, okay, I'm sorry. Um, now, we're just explaining that kahit pala nung mass vaccination, may consent may pala consent dapat. May consent pa rin. Ah, okay. Parents, kasi bata to, these are minors. Nine years ah, old, they're minors. Tama. Parents have to give consent kung may tuturok ang gobyerno sa'yo. And they are free to choose not to have it. And because oh, were they? they? Yeah, they and they were, it. they were... The problem is they were forced to get it because they were under... Pantawid Pamilya Program. They will not get there. Ano, ah, sige, naku, ang dami pag-uusapan. Okay. Kulang <laughs> <laughs> ang... You're watching The Source on CNN Philippines. Our guest today, former health undersecretary Ted Herbosa. Sir, uh, so many things to clarify because it's good for the moms to know yung mga nanay na pinabakunahan yung kanilang anak. Kailangan ba may... Kasi kanina, in-establish natin during the experimental stage, your time, yeah. and Secretary O, na kailangan talaga may consent. May para may consent, correct. Info Ito kailangan din ba? Yes, because the children are minors. The children do not know what is going to be injected in them. So the Department of Health and the Department of Education at that time uh, tried to do a, what I call a measly copy of an informed consent. So, hindi siya maganda because it did not inform the possible risk. So, it's not what we call a true informed consent. Mm -hmm. And what I heard is that some mothers uh, did not were sign. not able to sign any of yes. those and their children were still injected. So that's also also another violation uh, of uh, rights rights of people. So if that's a violation, what's the culpability? What's the penalty? What's the liability? Is it the DOH? Is it going to be the Dep Ed, sir? Well, if there's harm, there's a big culpability. If there's harm to the child that got injected, and then not, the the parents did not consent. The one I was tracking was the first death. Mm. The first death was a uh, a child from ba Bagak Bataan that mm. had congenital heart disease and fever mm -hmm. before. Uh, a week Ito ba before, si Christine? I, no, 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 not okay. Christine. This was the first one. Okay. And uh, this was dismissed as due, died because of the congenital heart attack, uh -huh. heart disease. Uh -huh. To me, this, this child should not have been given Dengvaksha because sh she is in the criteria. So that's why an informed consent is important because those questions need to be asked. That's uh -huh. why it needs to be physician supervised and not school based or straight to the community with barangay health workers and nurses injecting it. Na, nakalinya why... na lang sila tapos ano na lang Correct. Inject... The doctor has to see you in a clinic and say your daughter or cha son may benefit from this because I treated him for dengue last year. There's a new vaccine that if they had dengue before it can protect them from the second dengue. The physician has to choose that. You cannot do that and say, 
all nine-year-olds in this region line, line up, we will give you vaccine. And true enough, this is what Sanofi is saying now. Okay, so back. I want to go to the bids and awards committee. Ultimately, sino ba nag-approve nito? Is it who, who the secretary of well, you will know if depending. But on is who it recommended by? But it's recommended by the bids and awards committee. Is correct. that correct? So procurement, the government procurement follows a certain law, the Republic Act 9184, and the uh, governments are uh, asked to create what we call bids and awards committee, headed by a third level, minimum third level rank government. Mm -hmm. So what? Uh, when there are many things to be procured, what we usually do is we distribute them to several other. Uh, Were hospitals. you a member of the BAC? I was a chair of a BAC okay. that uh, took care of hospitals. Because not I'm the vaccines? No, not the vaccines. Who, who was the one who took care of the vaccines if then? It's, if it's, I think it was uh, Undersecretary Bayugo, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. Or the, maybe even uh, ASEC Ubial at that time. Uh -huh. So I'm not sure, but technically if th those BACs are busy, it is, uh, it is proper to allocate it to another Bids and Awards Committee. So someone ordered that. Uh -huh. Someone ordered that, let's bring it to PCMC so that they're back and procure this. That's why the PCMC the came director. into the picture. Yes. So ngayon, so it's... Para mabilis. Again, yeah. another process to hazen. But that's my stuff. question, Doc. I mean, why did the PCMC, why is the PCMC the one signing off into this? Parang ang PCMC, parang, to me, ah, to make it very simple, parang sila yung nag-approve, no, uh, nag-release, no. nag nag-sign. The, nag the, nag okay, the approval is from the Department of... The request came from Secretary Garin. She talked to the, the Sanofi people who told her the price and who told her a discount. Another thing illegal, you never negotiate before an actual procurement. So they negotiated the price that will be the price for government. She announced that on TV that it's a different price for government and a different price for the private sector. Highly, highly uh, yeah, illegal. And then you, you ask for the money from budget and management. Budget and management gives a sub-allotment release order. We have money for this. Here's the paper that proves you have money. Start buying it. You get the SARO December 29. They remember this drug was registered December 22 to 2015. December 29, they get a sub-allotment release order. They got the money to the Department of Health. And then it was transferred in January mm. to? Gen to PCMC, to Philippine Children's Medical so, Center, uh, forgive, to go ahead and procure. Forgive me. That's where I'm a little lost. Why, do, why did the DBM transfer the money to PCMC? I'm a little No, lost. no. It's the Department of Health. Ah, okay. Transfer. So, so DBM... DBM gave it to the Department of Health. Our finance office received it in December 29. And then? That's a that's holiday. Yes. <laughs> 30, again, 31. Oh. Again, I, I, oh, things, and then, things that never happened, so happened. You had the finance department. Um, well, someone ordered the finance department two. to pass it on to Philippine Children's Medical Center, which is a hospital of the Department of Health. I see. To procure? To procure a, the dengue vaccine. Uh, okay. Um, so we, we have now the director of... Uh, uh, Director Lechon is saying on media yeah. that he was ordered yeah. following orders. Yeah. And that is a, a tip. anyway, also, we, ha we also have. So again, there's a lie that it was PCMC that procured it. That's the problem here. There are a series of lies being peddled to us, the public. And it's each one, each lie is changing and being the truth comes out. Doc, who is ultimately responsible for this? I think Secretary Garin is. Is there uh, anyone else? People who approve this particular Such program, as? but but you know my, my thinking is that I, I was undersecretary and I advised the president on health matters. The president is not a doctor. You are the alter ego. The secretary of health, mm. the undersecretary of health, are experts mm -mm. in the field of health, and you are the ones supposed to give advice. Okay. My problem is sometimes the leaders will follow your expert advice <laughs> or unexpert advice depending on what the we're, advice is. Okay, we're going to say thank you to former Health Undersecretary Ted Herbosa. We're still going to talk about this. We're live on Facebook. We will be back, but during our break, we're going to discuss this on Facebook because uh, Secretary Garin was saying that it was discussed during the time of Secretary Ona, and Secretary Ona actually has a response to this. We're going to talk about it on Facebook, but we'll be back after this break. So when it, yeah, you never budgeted it, but Secretary Ona said 
he he spoke to Pinoy about it that there's an experimental drug. Yeah, but so he, he knew, discussed he, it. Yeah, he discussed yeah. it. But he knew. So don't say he didn't discuss no, it. No, no, he diba? didn't discuss it. But he knew, like me as a clinician, it will take long. It's Hindi enough. Just, it takes developmental time. We're both clinicians. Garin is not. Garin has been a politician all her life. She doesn't know how the health system works. Yeah. And she's trying to tweak it. And you can't fool the doctors. All the doctors are behind Ona and me. Yeah. Because they understand what the hell we're talking about. The public <laughs> doesn't. Because she's, she's the one talking to the public. So I want to bring this out um, to those watching us. It, this is Secretary Ona's statement. No, wala na tayong time to discuss it. But it says here, I recall in more than one occasion, more than one occasion that I mentioned in passing to then President Aquino for a possible dengue vaccine. Possible. So he talked about it. Correct. I think it's not accurate to say he never you never talked about it he did he talked about uh, it when i say we never talked about we never talked about implementing yes, a yes. dengue vaccine program to yeah. inject one million children filipino children yeah. of a new vaccine that is unproven we are saying there is a vaccine being studied and in fact there are two other vaccines yeah, being the studied. one in china and the united states correct and yeah. the japan in the united uh, states japan sorry and of course you, you, as a doctor, you wait for all of those before oh you decide God. what you will recommend to your low. patients. Oh, oh. so oh, you wait for all three. So that's the reason why Sanofi connived with Garin because they want to put it out first. Mauna it's a race. Sila. Mauna sila, they earn the money because if the second one comes out and it's better than Sanofi's, or all their research or cheaper. All their research is gone to waste. Yeah, I get that. I that's the that's that. the industry in the in the vaccine industry. But but doc, my question is, if Sanu, it's also Sanofi naman that said, uh, you know, also brought out the risks. You know why they right? did that? Why? Because experts had now published that they were wrong in their analysis, and Dr. Dance was able to publish in the Journal of uh, uh, Clinical Epidemiology that their subgroup analysis was faulty and wrong. And it's published in November 27. November 27. Ito then, ito of 20, ito. Oh, this year. Uh, that is salita lang namin. Now it's published in a scientific journal discussing all these details so, why Sanofi was public wrong. Public record. Public record. Na. And then, yan pa yung paper ni ano ni Ona na kinoko. This is a New England Journal of Medicine. Yeah, yeah, this one. That, that one is a type and I, I forwarded it to you also. So the, the expert is, the community is already saying, may problema yung vaccine. So what will Sanofi do? Damage control. Oh, oh, they they declared it. So when they declared it, who is who is in a problem? Mexico is not in a problem because they did the correcting, physician supervised uh, trial. Brazil did that as well. You're watching The Source on CNN Philippines. Our guest today, former health undersecretary Ted Hervasa. Sir, so um, how do we proceed? I mean, there's so much still to talk about, but I want you to address possibly the mothers who are worrying about their children. Papaano ho yun? Correct. So the first thing that uh, Secretary Duque did is to ask FDA to cancel the registration and ban the sale and use of Dengvaxia in the Philippines. So that's already protected many more who have been wanting to get this vaccine because it was falsely claimed that it would benefit a lot of Filipino children. So now that's put aside. What now about we the 800,000? We need to go uh, to the 733,000. I don't know now the record. Some say 800, some say 733. We need to have a registry. We need to have a registry of all these children that were vaccinated during the campaign of Secretary Yeah, they're doing Green. a master list on this. They sir. need to do sir, a master list. I want you list. to address the, the mothers. What can they do? Okay. And so, we already know what the DOH is planning to do, but what, what, what about the mothers? And if the mothers are sure that their children never had dengue in their life, in their nine years of life, they are what I call red flags. They need to be reported to the Department of Health, and the Department of Health needs to monitor them. And, and if ever they get fever or any symptoms of dengue, immediately the Department of Health has to take care of them. And I think Sanofi has to take uh, cost of this particular cost of government. Okay. We, we cannot be the one mm -hmm. saying uh, we will take care of Sanofi is partly liable in this. Mm -hmm. In fact, in, in other countries, a class action lawsuit is done. A class action lawsuit for all those parents. So I'm, I'm inviting all mothers also who think their children did not get consent 
were injected and did not have dengue ever in their life, they should go to either the DOJ mm -hmm. or the uh, Volunteers Against uh, Crime and Corruption. BACC. Yeah. BACC. Okay. And uh, the website also of Dr. Pineda, who was a former W, who's okay. also trying to accumulate all of this. All right. So, uh, pwede rin po yun. So, and uh, the DOH, of course. The <laughs> DOH also put up a number where people can Yeah, they call. have a hotline, hotline as well. To so, just to add um, to the uh, statement of Secretary Ona, just on the last part of his statement, it actually says this. I'm just going to read it out. The leadership that took over the DOH after I left in December 2014 are solely responsible for all the decisions that has resulted in what is becoming to be a major health nightmare in the country today. Again, that is a statement of Secretary Ona. He's away, right? Uh, He's in the United States. United and he will States. be back. And as soon as he's back, I'm sure he will come out in yeah. media and probably. Yeah, we would want to interview him again. Uh, Dr. Bosa, thank you so much. I know you're going to the Senate as well. Thanks yes. for uh, taking time out to speak to us. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. And thank you for joining us here on The Source. I'm Pinky Webb. You're watching CNN Philippines.